Hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this ranking where I am gonna let you know about some of the things that I have been trying as of late, letting you know which things worked out, which things are new favorites and which things did not work out and are quickly exiting out of my collection as being decluttered. I do have quite a few things this time that I actually don't love so we are gonna talk about that of course and if you haven't been before if this is your first video here hello my name is angie i am such a lover of beauty makeup i love trying things reviewing things letting you know which things work out which things do not and if you want to see more videos like that don't forget to subscribe because i do upload every day until christmas <laughs> i did film this look i filmed it as a get ready with me and that video should already be live if it is live i will put that in the pinned comment together with what i have on my face right now in case you're interested what is that eyeshadow what is that lipstick what is that foundation which i'm actually going to be talking about the foundation in this video that is going to be in the pinned comment and if the tutorial is live i will leave a link to that as well and if it's not live it's coming real soon because i did film it but yeah all the things that i'm going to be talking about i will put in the description box and if i have any dedicated videos to any of these things there's because there's going to be some eyeshadow palettes here i will put a link to that as well in the description box so if you're wondering about anything check the description box you will always find the info there this is actually going to be the last ranking that i do for this year until i do the best of 2022 the worst of 2022 and of course my big ranking every palette that i tried this year that is coming soon as well but i just i wanted to get this out of the way first okay let's start at the absolute bottom and work our way up and I actually have two things here I'm gonna put these at the same position because these did not work out for me and this is the um, this is about face and this is the sister band of about face which is the AF 94 which is the brand that's sold at Walmart both of these are orange cream blushes this is a well this is a multi-use chic and lip color tint this one and it is in saver and I will put like like I said I will put the names and everything down below and this is the uh, cheek blush in cheek freak blush balm in raunchy <sighs> here's the thing I like the color of this one more it, this one is too sheer it blends out to nothing and I don't think that the effect is really and also it is a balm so it stays a little bit sticky so it kind of lifts at least my makeup a little bit and it is a lot of hassle for close to no color this one it has better color but it really lifts and i've been trying to use it like the stick on my cheeks i've been trying to use my finger on and i just don't think that this one gives as again the same the result that i want this one i feel have a little bit more color to it but I just don't think that either of these are the kind of blush formula that I like. I don't think they're pigmented enough. I think they're too uh, balmy, greasy, so I feel like they lift whatever's underneath. And I don't love any of these. I don't think they're my favorites. I'm gonna get rid of both of them, I think. The next thing I want to talk about that did not work out for me, and this makes me very sad because I do love Glamlight and I do get PR from Glamlight, but this one wasn't my favorite, and this is the Batscara. Love everything about this, like the whole tube and everything, the name. I don't think that this really does anything for my lashes, and sometimes I use falsies every time I do my makeup. I have falsies on half my eyes, so the inner part does not have falsies, and of course the lower lashes. Sometimes all I need is for a mascara to just make my lashes a little visible and to make them black to blend in with the falsies. But this one has a brush that's just a little bit too big to be perfect on my lower lashes, which is the only part where I really care about how my lashes like look because I will use falsies almost every time I do my makeup. And when I don't use falsies, I tend to use a mascara that's more elongating. And this isn't either volumizing or elongating, this just makes my lashes black. And had this had a smaller brush, I would have thought that this would have been an okay lower lash mascara. But this one just doesn't really do it for me. So for me, this isn't perfect, but I'm excited to see maybe Glamlight will make a better or more a perfect a mascara formulation for me in the future next thing i'm gonna mention and this is just i've heard so many people really loving this and this is uh, the gimme brow voluminizing pencil i also got this one in pr i will try and mark down below which things are sent in pr which things i bought myself i really like the benefit brow products and i've been really into the benefit uh, actually brow pomade i'm not using that today i'm actually using the house labs pen but i will say that brow pomade is really good because it is sheer like it's build buildable not like sheer but it's buildable so it's really easy to work with this one is 
Um, I think that this is perfect if you want to fill in brows that you already have. That's what I'm going to say. Because it really is a more blurring, kind of a volumizing looking pen. And I, I don't really have much brows. I, I This is a build a brow situation. <laughs> We start with very little and we end up here. And I like my brows like this. I know that other people like their brows in a different way and that's perfectly fine. You get to do your brows however you want them and I get to do my brows however I want them. I want something that's a little bit more precise than this. I feel like this is a little bit of a, the wrong tool for doing the brush, like my brows like I do. If you are a fuss free person that just wanna fill out your brows a little bit, fill in some gaps, make them look a little bit more uh, even and like voluminizing because this is a little bit blurring so it will make your brows look fuller, this could be for you. But I wouldn't say if you are the kind of person that more is in the situation where I am, where you're in the build a brow situation, I don't think that this is gonna be uh, the perfect one for you. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something I really like to give beauty brand by Gwen Stefani. I think she has some really, really killer products and you probably will hear me mention her matte uh, bullet lipstick formula in the best of 2022. But the lip gloss formula was not my favorite and this is a preference thing because this is a very full coverage, like thicker full coverage color kind of a situation and I don't want a lip lacquer. I want something that is more uh, sheer and a little bit more like I don't want to say what do I, I want to have a formula that's a little like pillowy and glossy and semi sheer and this is more of a lip lacquer a lot of color and I thought that this on me looked a little weird when it was this light I just didn't love it I heard other people love this formula and if you love an opaque gloss you might like this one if you like something that has a little bit more color to it maybe you'll like it it just wasn't for me though it's not the type that I prefer. The next thing that I didn't like was the No Budge Cream Eyeshadow from e.l.f. And I have the orangey one and I can't see, oh wait, here it is, Golden Race. And I thought that this one was really hard to work with. It became very patchy, almost looked, almost looked dry to the point where you, if you were trying to like perfect it, it felt like it was gonna like crumble off. Did not love this one. I've heard other people say that this is the one color in the range that is not good. So I'm not reviewing the entire cream eyeshadow range. I'm just reviewing this orangey one because I've heard from others that the other colors are good. But I'm letting you know right now that if you are a lover of orange like me, this orange one at least wasn't it wasn't very good i also didn't love this one this is the one size matte eye popper this is a smoothing creamy eyeshadow and this one is meant to be either like an easy like in something you can build eyeshadow on or like an easy smoky eye i think that this one is very easy to blend if you're blending it on something that is firm and wrinkle free but my lids are not firm or wrinkle free and it made it really hard to blend and I feel like this on a not 21 year old lid just took a lot of effort for something that looked kind of haphazardly like I would have been able to make a better result with a bronzer and also dry down to an absolute matte finish, like a liquid lipstick, to the point where it's not really an eye primer either because it is so dry that it's not gonna grip onto any eyeshadow. So for me, I don't think that this formula is meant for anyone over the age of 25. That's what I'm gonna say about that. Next I am gonna mention, and I'm gonna mention all of these because I am fairly disappointed in all of these. And I think the main reason is that I don't think that these are good enough. I think that these are decent, but I like other things in a similar price range more than I like these. From Colourpop or from NYX, for example, or there are several brands that do really good stuff like this. I don't think that this is that. This is the Conceal and Perfect. This is an under eye brightener. It's more like a corrector and concealer in one. This is, first of all, the packaging is a very annoying packaging. It has this poof, but it is a really small poof, which works good for this concealer brightener, but not as good on these. Uh, I think that they should not have had the same packaging, especially not on the, um, the 
the contour we'll get to that i think that this one is okay the concealer is the one that makes the most sense it has very few colors though and for me it is way too peachy to be used on its own so for me i use this as a corrector that one is okay the highlighter is for me not highlighty enough to go through the whole hassle of blending in the cream. I feel like it lifts a little bit and blends into your foundation. So I think that this is the kind of product that will probably look better uh, either without foundation on your cheeks or if you are using to mix it with your foundation. But because of the applicator, I think you can see it's not super sheeny. It's just also has a very, very deep base. And this is number two. It has a very deep base and I'm using number two in this one and I'm using number two in this one but the highlighter in number two is a very 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 dark base to the point where you have to really sheer it out to not have that dark base on your skin so I think that like the two in these are made for a light medium but the two in the highlighter is more meant for a tan skin tone and I also don't think that it is highlighting enough it looks flattering enough to warrant just going through the hassle because Milani is not the most affordable thing at the drugstore. The um, the contour is the formula that I like the most but this sponge is way too small to be a contour and you have to use a lot of product and there you can see I've used this some time but you will go through this so quickly. How much is it in this one? But I, I want to know. This is 0 0.2 US fluid ounces, 8 milliliters. I kind of want to see how much is there in another liquid or like similar? Because I feel like you would go through this so quickly because you need to use a lot. You need to squeeze out a lot. And this packaging is not good. It's too small for cream contour. I feel like they just made one packaging and tried to just really force that into three different formulas. And I think this should have just stuck to the corrector in, in this kind of packaging. That's just my personal preference. Now I need to go and like see how much it is because Milani is a drugstore brand, but it's not the cheapest drugstore brand, especially not outside of the US. And now I want to see if that is a lot of product or a little product. All of them have the same amount. I mean, I picked up some alternatives just to compare, but the Hollywood Contour wand, which I think is what they were thinking, first of all, it has a bigger poof. You can see it, it makes more sense. Okay, so this one says it has 0 0.2 fluid ounces, and this one says 0 0.4 fluid ounces. So it would say that this one has double and of course this is way expensive as well but i'm just letting you know that sometimes a deal might not be that big of a deal <laughs> because it's like so much less product and that is something that you will go through and then nyx bear with me concealer which is also from the drugstore which i think is a really good one this one has zero point three two so this one has almost the same uh, amount of product inside so this does not have a lot of product inside but i think that this one it has a little bit more product than this one but i think that this one is a better formula i mean i don't love this one but it is better than the sponge that's on this one so this is the one that i would recommend if you're looking for a drugstore concealer or the maybelline one that i've been talking about as well the not the fit me but the super stay that concealer i also love that one i just think that this one was a little mediocre and I think that you can find better things in a similar price range if you're looking for like contour highlighter concealer at the drugstore okay I've been going on and on and on and on let's leave that one the last thing I want to mention in the I don't love it category is the Laura Geller serum blush this one is in poppy peach and this one first of all it matches my top perfectly i really like this one i like the color of this one this is a very sheer formula it goes on like a sponge like this and then you blend it out it's very sheer and if you uh, end up working with it too much you might end up lifting your foundation i think that this looks really beautiful on your skin but you can tell that this is really sheer the way that i like this one better than like the ones from about face is that this one dries down it looks really dewy and beautiful on the skin and i feel like this one just overall looks better on the skin it is easier as well with this sponge to just sponge it on where you want to and then to blend it out with your finger i wish it was a little bit more opaque because it is very sheer and i do need to go in with two layers and when i do go in with the second layer there is a risk of lifting your foundation so it is a little bit of a finicky product but if i just can work with it a little bit 
I do like the result, I do like how it looks, but it's definitely not my favorite blush in my collection. I'm gonna put the House Lab foundation here. I don't necessarily hate this foundation. I don't necessarily think that this is a bad foundation, but I think that this foundation needs an update on how it is described. This one is described as having a natural finish and I highly disagree. I think this is a radiant foundation. It is very glowy and it looks very glowy on me very quickly. I don't need to go out in the Texas heat. I don't need to be seeing any kind of humidity for this one to look extremely radiant on my skin within a couple of hours. And I don't really have oily skin. So I just think that this one is more of a very radiant foundation. If you have dry skin, I'm sure you're gonna love it. I just don't love the finish of this one. I thought it was gonna have a natural finish. I just don't think it does. It doesn't break up on me though. So that is like, it, that's a good thing. But I feel like this is gonna be more of a mixing foundation for me because I feel like I need to go and wash my face <laughs> when I use that one. Next, I'm gonna mention, this is the Scooby-Doo and Glam Light Highlighter Palette or the Highlighter Duo. Think that this is just so cool. I think the packaging this one is 10 out of 10. This formula is not my favorite though. It is, I don't mind the sparkling uh, highlighter. I actually like a sparkly highlighter. It, a, a sparkly highlighter has its time and place for me. If I want to be a little fancy, if I want to have something extra, I will definitely use that. I'm not using it today though, but this one, it, it lacks a little binder. So I feel like the sparkles kind of go all over the face and a sparkly highlighter, you, I feel like I need to be a little precise with that so that I don't have a sparkly face. I want to have a sparkly cheekbone and I feel like this one gives me a sparkly face and that is not my favorite. The colors are beautiful though uh, and I like other parts of the collection a lot more than I like, like this part. This is the one size powder. This is in translucent. I am definitely going to be using this powder, but this is a very matting fine powder to the point that I feel like my skin feels matte. So this is a powder that I'm going to put in my stash and I'm going to bring this out in the dead of summer when I feel like my skin is fairly normal. I never got dry skin, not even when I was living in Sweden. I never get dry skin here either. I do not have a problem with that. Now that we're into like fall, winter, I don't have any kind of oiliness on my skin. I will say here in Texas, I've had more of a I want to say like, oh, I get a little oily around my nose. I guess that's what's called combo skin, but I never have any problems with that now during like winter time. So I will be bringing this one out during summer when I feel like I need to combat a little bit of that oiliness that comes with super humid, super warm weather. So I will not be using this during winter because I feel like it's a little bit too matte for me for the normal skin that I have right now. So I will be saving that one for summer. It's not my favorite powder, but I definitely think that I will find a purpose for it. This is the Aureum Beauty Blurring Primer. I'm feeling pretty indifferent to this one. I feel like 2022 was the year where I finally discovered that primers have a purpose. I finally discovered what primers can do for your skin. I've appreciated a couple of primers from before, but this year I really started to notice a difference. And with this one, I don't. So it's nice. It's like a little blurring primer. It, it feels pretty, uh, it comes out like, like nothing, like clear. You can't even see it, but it comes out like a little almost gel and you work it in and it feels almost a little bit like the water cream that I like from uh, Benefit. I feel the, the big difference with this one is that this one feels a little bit more hydrating and the Benefit one feels a little bit more um, smoothing without being like silicone-y. So I feel like this one is just like having a very light moisturizer under your like foundation. And sometimes I might need that, but I don't necessarily think that this is blurring. I have a palette here from Colourpop. I don't think there's anything wrong with this color story. I'm simply putting this lower down because of the color story. The quality it's perfectly fine. It's it's the nice Colourpop quality. I don't think I had any problems with this palette, but I don't love working with gray eyeshadows. So I'm putting this towards the bottom because of that. But if you like this color scheme, you might like this palette. This is the Troublemaker palette. I just know for me, 
this is not going to be one of my most used ColourPop palettes. And I'm putting the small palettes by Melt Cosmetics here. I feel like I'm a little bit disappointed by these bad Zodiac palettes. I have a video on these. These I will definitely link the video down below because Melt usually they're better than this or that's that's what I'm questioning myself. I'm like, oh, they're better than this. And then I'm like, are they? Are they better than this? Because how I'm feeling with Melt right now is that there is really nothing wrong with these palettes. These are nice quality, but they are so predictable. And I just feel like Melt fell behind. They are not evolving anything with like formulas, color stories. Like this is not a very fun release and they're still pretty expensive and I'm just, they're a little boring. They're a little safe, they're a little predictable and I think that for this price tag, you should be a little bit more wowed than, than you are with these. Again, we're talking about color story here. There is not a lot of occasions in my life where I reach for an all brown palette. There just isn't. If this one had had some, if this one had had a matte white even, something that's a little bit more contrasty, I feel like this one doesn't go light enough for it to be a perfect nude palette for me because I like neutrals sometimes. I can be into neutrals. I wear neutrals sometimes. You've seen that on my channel, but I feel like this one is pretty mid-range and dark and all the shimmers are as you can tell pretty mid-range and dark except this one here i just don't think for me this is contrasty enough to be a perfect neutral palette for me there are other neutral palettes that i prefer way more than this one with that being said this is really good quality the quality is beautiful it's just not a color story that i'm gonna reach for and at the end of the day it's not just about the quality. It's also about like, are you going to reach for it? Are you going to enjoy wearing it? Are you going to enjoy using it? And this is just very brown a very mid-tone. I really like this formula, but I don't like this formula as much as I like some other like shimmery duochrome formulas from other brands. And this is the Noctilucent uh, from Blend Body Cosmetics. This is a like duochrome multichrome highlighter palette. If you like a super blinding, very visible highlighter, this could be for you. And there are a time and place for that. Like I said, there are times when I really want that. I will say that this one is, this one doesn't melt in as beautiful in the skin as some other highlighter formulas do. And I do like a blinding highlighter and I like a colored highlighter and I like this formula. I just like other formulas better than this one. There's nothing wrong with it especially not if you like a super blinding highlighter. I just have other favorites. Not saying this is bad, but sometimes you just remember other things that you have that you like more. I like the idea of this palette and I like the color store of this palette. This is the Diner palette by Martina Cosmetics. And I just think that this is not perfect when it comes to execution. I think that this is filled with cat hair. I think that this is a pretty color story, but I wasn't blown away by the shimmers in this one. And I didn't, wasn't blown away by the mattes either. This is a decent formula. There's nothing wrong with it, but this formula uh, didn't blow me away to the point where I was like, I cannot wait for the next release. Cause that's not how I feel. I tried it and now I know but I also know that if this is the formula that they're offering, there's nothing wrong with it. If, you, if Martina Cosmetics is a brand that's easy for you to get a hold of, I'm not gonna tell you that it's a bad formula. I'm just gonna tell you that it's not a favorite formula and it's probably not gonna be a brand where I'm like, oh my God, I cannot wait to review it again. Maybe this one wasn't representing the formula as a whole. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not blown away. Let me actually get this one in here. I think this is a really nifty one. I'm gonna put this in my purse. It smells a little minty. This is the yellow lip gloss from the e.l.f. I think it was like gaming inspired collection. This is the one up lip gloss. It's the yellowy one. If you are looking for a yellow lip gloss, I definitely recommend this one. This is a more of a balmy texture. It feels a little pillowy. Like I said, a little pillowy and balmy on the lips. 
it's very comfortable it has a minty sensation and it is a little bit of a yellow tone to it so it makes all of your lip colors or your own lips look a little warmer so it's definitely a sheer formula i think this is a really really good one i will say though that the tube feels a little cheapy cheapy but i mean it is as well and also the amount of product you're getting in this one of course isn't that much but i don't go through lip products so that's not a problem for me but i overall think that this was a good buy i don't know if it's still available but I kind of like it. I got the entire Nude Ego collection sent to me from uh, BH Cosmetics and I really like the quality of this one. I will say I haven't used the big palette and I have only used one of the small palettes. So this is mainly me letting you know about this palette here, but I've swatched this entire collection and I can let you know that all of this swatches very equally, but my review is more about this one and I think this is a really beautiful palette if I were to choose I would of course wish that this was even lighter and this was even darker but I do think that this is a really good small palette I'm not going to be keeping all of these I think that the one I'm keeping is this one the this is me the one that's purple because I really want to use this one as well I'm thinking I'm going to do like a reel or something with this one because it swatched beautifully it felt exactly like this one so I think that this like this collection the nude ego is the good formula from bh cosmetics i'm not blown away by the color selections but i'm still going to be keeping two of these smaller palettes in my collection and i'm going to be giving the other ones away i just of course wish that they would have released something like passion in paris or blueberry muffin or lost in los angeles of course i wish that they would have released something like that this year they didn't but it also it gives space for other brands to be number one this year because bh cosmetics has been number one two years in a row. Not this year, but I do like these. I'm gonna put these two in the same position, but mainly I think it's this one that is talking, and this is the Vintage Glam Remixed from uh, Ghost Gods. This is a Swedish indie brand. This is a really, really fun color story. I'm loving the shimmer quality of these. Super, super beautiful. Duochromes, multichromes, very effectful shimmers that look beautiful on the eyes without looking too crepey. This is also the new Neutrals Remixed. This one looks like this. This one also, I think you can see, yeah, this one also has some like multichromes and duochromes in it that just makes it a little bit special. I think that this formula is beautiful, but it's not perfect. The mattes are a little, little finicky to work with. Nothing impossible, but I just wanted to let you know that I think that the shimmer formula is the star of the show. Nothing wrong with the mattes. But it's not my favorite. This is the Hallow Bean by Betty Bean and Shroud palette. I think that this is a beautiful quality palette. I do like the quality of Shroud Cosmetics and I'm very grateful that they sent this to me. I think the reason why this one isn't at the tippity top is because this one, which would be my favorite color in the palette, or maybe these two the greens together, this green isn't fully opaque. It is a little bit sheer, which is absolutely doable, but I would have wished that it would have a little bit more substance. And I do know from before that Shroud Cosmetics really does um, really impactful, opaque formulas that almost feel a little... I don't want to say creamy, but like it's the word that comes to mind. I also will say that this color story is a little tricky because it is very easy to go a little muddy with this color story because you have a dark green and a dark blue but then the colors that you have to blend these out with is is orange and yellow and if you were to blend like if you use this one or this one or like any of it's colors that are prone to be muddy together unless you 100% know what you're doing so I feel like this is a little bit more of a expert mode when it comes to color theory and color combos at least according to me and how i do my makeup of course not everybody does their makeup like i do my makeup i try to see things out of the lens of like how i do my makeup and i look at this color story and i realize that i will have to think a little bit extra especially if i want to use this uh like dark blue up here because i honestly don't know what i would match that with I, just looking at this, I, I'm not 100% sure what color I would put that together with. I'm going to quickly squeeze this one in here. Again, I'm not showing it because as this one is going up, I'm not 100% sure if everybody has been opening their advent calendars from Lunar Beauty. This is the 12 Days of Lunar from Lunar Beauty. I will say the quality of this one is really pretty. and I love the packaging. 
I do think though, when we saw the um, reveal for this palette, uh, or reveal for this advent calendar, because this came in an advent calendar, Manny said this is a fall themed color story. And I don't think that all of us 100% got exactly how true that was. Because the packaging is winter, but the inside is very fall. And I wish that the color stories would match better. And I think that this is like constructive feedback that he have been getting from quite a lot of people at this point. So I do think that he has probably taken this into consideration for the next time. I will say though, the quality of the product in here is beautiful. I just wish that we got this color story or add that the color story that's actually inside here was represented on uh, the front. That's just me. Or actually, that's not just me. That's actually quite a lot of people. Next, I want to mention the Unearthly Cosmetics So Strange palette. This one was one of the palettes that was released for uh, Halloween. And I got this one, which is the one that has like pinks and greens. This, again, I love the quality from Unearthly Cosmetics. It has some really impactful and fun shimmers here. This like multi-chrome here is like, it's like no other. It's called Unusual and like it is so cool. Like, look at that. It is like a green to a gold to a fiery peach. It is very, very unique. It's more unique than a lot of like uh, multi-chromes out there. I will say the formula is a little creamy, so it is prone to creasing a little bit. So just have that in mind when you're using it. So try to not put on too much of it. The thing that I don't love about this palette is there is nothing that is deep enough for me. That's not usually a problem with the Unearthly Cosmetics palettes. And I think that this will be more of a companion palette for me. This one is the uh, Scared of Sheets. It's very flaky, but again, if you, if you use it, let me see, if you use it like a little bit sheer, it's really beautiful, but this is also very creamy. So again, try to use a sheer layer of it. You see how that spreads? You, you need the smallest amount. I think you can see how that one looks. But it is a very, very creamy formula. So it is a little prone to, um, to creasing. So try to not put too much on. You can see how far that spread. Use a little try to spread it out a little bit. I love the formulas that are in here. I love the colors that are in here. I just wish that we had something that was even darker as well. The next thing I want to mention is actually the foundation that I have on today, and that is the Shape Tape Cloud by Tarte. I wasn't a hundred percent convinced by this one the first times I've used it. So I've been able to try this out actually, I think for a couple of months now to really make up my mind about this one. And I like this one a lot for what it is. On me, this is a medium coverage matte foundation, which is a little bit cloud-like in the consistency, but it is pretty matte. And I will say that normally a matte foundation is pretty, <sighs> a matte foundation is pretty full coverage. I think this one a little bit reminds me of the Eavesdrop by Fenty, but I think that the Eavesdrop by Fenty has longer longevity than this one. But they are fairly similar in how I feel like they are. And the only reason why this one, again, isn't higher on top, because I like a medium coverage matte foundation, is that this is not as, it, the longevity isn't there the way that it is on the eavesdrop. So I would not necessarily recommend this one if you have dry skin, or if you do, please let me know how you feel about it, because I was a little bit surprised because I thought that this was gonna be more of a natural finish, but I, I do think that it's pretty matte on me. Not like flat matte, but it's definitely not in any way, shape, or form dewy. Let's just put it like that. But I like that. These are the matte lipsticks by Rare Beauty. I think that these lipsticks are really beautiful. I have two colors, which is Talented, which I think is the lightest beige color that is offered. And I also have the color that is Fun, which is more of a, like a slightly wearable terracotta, which is a really beautiful color that I have been enjoying. I think that these are really good 
and I don't want to say comfort matte, but they're definitely not as matte as the Give Beauty matte lipsticks. These have a little bit more of a give to them. They're a little bit more, I don't want to know if I want to call them like satin, but they're, they're definitely more of a comfort matte. You can see there's a little sheen to them. They do dry down though on the lips. I prefer the one from Give Beauty because I feel like those are thinner on the lips and they feel like nothing. But I think that this formula is really beautiful as well. And if you have drier lips, you might prefer this one because it goes on a little bit more creamy. Another formula that I've really been enjoying is from Blend Bunny. I think you can only buy these in like a pair. And I do have three lip liners and two lipsticks. But I think this is a really beautiful formula. This one is in Tees, which is like a, uh, like a beige -y, like a milk chocolate. It is like a very thin cushiony, almost moussey formula that goes on very thin on the lips and it does dry down. Uh, so for that reason, if you don't like a formula that doesn't 100% dry down, maybe this isn't your perfect formula, but I do think it's really, really comfortable on the lips. And this pinky one is called Doll Face. I think there's only four colors to choose from those. I mean, I do wish in the future that she would come up with more colors. And this one is the lightest color, if I'm not totally mistaken. But still, I like the formula. I don't think that this is a drying, crusty formula. But there is actually another formula that I personally like more, uh, which is very surprising for me to say. And that is the liquid lipstick formula from BH Cosmetics. This is the first time that I have tried this formula. And I don't know if this is a formula that they have in other products as well and this is from the nude ego collection and this is the mm, creamy liquid lipstick very good description this is a liquid lipstick that doesn't 100 percent dry down this is the color uh, sin and i do have a video where i'm i will link the video with the nude ego where i'm swatching all of these very nice applicator it's flexible it's a very nice applicator these are fully opaque a little moussey but these do not 100 percent dry down and they are very comfortable and nice on the lips they're the kind of formula that i really like that just they're opaque and they have the longevity of a liquid lipstick, but they do not 100% dry down. So they are not 100% transfer proof, but they're also very comfortable on the lips. I was very surprised by how good I thought these BH Cosmetics liquid lipsticks were. And they're very affordable and they're a bunch of different colors. I have really been enjoying the Adept Cosmetics face palette. I have it in Stella. I got this from my friend Heather Austin because she got double, so she gave me one. This one has a highlighter and two uh, like blush formulas these are incredibly lightweight shimmery just lays like a really thin beautiful layer on the skin it just really layers wonderfully on the skin really really nice formula and i will say that this formula gives me a lot of hope or like excitement to see what other cheek uh, formulas or like cheek products adept is coming out with in the future because these are so beautiful on the skin they are the perfect amount of shimmer versus pigment very beautiful formula next is something that i have really been enjoying using and this is the glow lust by auric i think the main reason why i won't put a product like this on top is because i don't love a super sheeny face but i love using a product like this like just a half of a half of a pump in mixing in with my foundation to give it a little bit of luminosity which i didn't do today but like i've used a lot of highlighter on top and that's what you're seeing i really do enjoy this one for me I would prefer it to have less pigmentation because it does, the pigmentation of this one gives pigment to the foundation and it's not the exact like perfect shade for me. So for me, it would be better if it had less pigment. This is the, uh, the one right here. So it, it just has a little bit of the wrong shade for for me i used very little now so you can't like really see anything but it has almost i don't want to say peachy undertone but this one is in pyrite and there's like it's not perfect for my undertone but i don't think it's like meant like that either but it's just i wish it had even less pigmentation for how i like to use it i actually love the one that uh, fenty came up with it has the same packaging as the east straw but it's like a liquid highlighter mixing with foundation thing that one is beautiful because it doesn't have a base color and it doesn't change the formula of the foundation where you put it in i really enjoyed that one i actually enjoyed that one should i rank that one here 
I've been using that so much. If you've been watching my description box of the things that I've been using, I probably should have ranked that one here as well. Just know that I love that one and I forgot to rank it. It's really good. And I like that one more than I like this one, but just for the way that I like to use it. If I was the kind of person that would use only this one on my face, and no foundation, I think I would have preferred something like this that has a little base color. And I will say, I do prefer this one to the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Hollywood Flawless Finish because this one doesn't have the kind of a tacky, sticky texture that that one has. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. And I think I would have liked, you can tell, I think I would have liked this even more had I got this in the right shade because it is very light for me. This one is in Fair 4, which I think thought was gonna, I was going to be able to make this work because I was afraid that the medium was going to be too dark. But as you can tell, this is very, very light for me. This isn't my shade, but I think the formula is really beautiful. Less is more. And sometimes when you have a concealer that's too light for you, it ends up in emphasizing if you have like dark circles under your eyes. So for that reason, I love the formula, but I think I would have loved it even more had I had the right shade which this is not. I really like the Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy palette. I did do a look quite recently with this palette. I think this is a beautiful, dark, murky, mysterious, dark fantasy is a perfect name for this. And this one has something that I love, which is a matte white, which means that I can make any of these a little bit more pastel if I want to, because I can mix in the white. And I like that this one goes really deep. I like that this one goes really light. I wish that there was a lighter shimmer here as well. We do have a silver here that's really cool and like a, like a almost pink, like a baby pink. Do think that this is a beautiful palette though. And I have really come around to really love the Beauty Bay formula now that I know exactly how I want to work with it. But I do think that this is really pretty. The reason why this isn't on top is because I feel like Beauty Bay is kind of repeating themselves in the color schemes. And I would like to see a little bit of innovation when it comes to what kind of colors they choose. I got this recommendation from a friend of mine, and this is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Bronzer. And I have mine in light medium, I think. Pretty sure I have it in light medium. Yes. Oh my god, it took me forever to find. This is in light medium. This is a beautiful shade on me. This is a matte bronzer that is very similar in consistency to the Charlotte Tilbury matte bronzer because it is matte but not overly pigmented so you can build and there's like place, there's a little time for you to make a mistake because it is not overly pigmented, very blendable, very blurring soft finish. And I like that it's not overly pigmented. I like that it goes on beautifully and I like the color selection of this one and it's at the drugstore. So I honestly think that this is a really good bronzer if you just want a traditional bronzer, no shimmer, no fuzz. I recommend this one. This is the Blend Bunny Cosmetics All Done Up palette. And this has quickly become one of my favorite neutral palettes because this one has the things that I am looking for when I do my makeup when it comes to neutrals. I like the drama. I like that there is contrast with all of these light shades. There are some really interesting shimmers down here. There is a light baby pink, there is a silver, but there is also a, like an iridescent green so that I can take it in a different direction if I want to. There are some moss greens, some mustard, some bricks with this like pastel clay color. There are some really interesting things in here that if you gave this palette to someone who loves color and you gave this palette to someone who loves neutrals, you would come out with two so wildly different looks that you wouldn't even believe they're made with the same palette. And that is what I like about this one. And I like that it has like a matte white, a matte black. So I feel like this one, yeah, this one is, if you were to ask me top five neutral palettes, I think that this one has snagged one of those spots. I really think that this is a good neutral palette that appeals to someone like me that doesn't love neutrals. This is the Lisa Eldritch Seamless Skin Foundation. This is also a medium coverage, not 
matte finish this is a natural finish because it looks like your skin but not dry so i would say that this is a natural finish but this is a very beautiful medium coverage that just looks like your skin it just looks very fresh very beautiful and it wears really beautiful as well it wears gracefully so that it doesn't look cakey or weird or awful i really like this one and again I think that with this one though, if you apply too much, like trying to build it up, trying to make it into full coverage, it might look a little cakey. Because I really do think that just keeping it as a light layer to give a medium coverage is really where this one shines. And I really like a medium coverage foundation. So for me, this is a hit. I really do enjoy it. And I like the way this looks like my skin something I very much do enjoy. I have mine in shade number 11, which is a really good shade for me as well when I have a little bit of a tan. I think that this foundation is beautiful. But the thing that I like even more from Lisa Eldridge that I bought when I bought that foundation is this new lip formula that nobody told me. <laughs> I probably told you about it in my new makeup releases and then didn't buy it. This is the, what is this one called? But this is the sheer glowy lip formula. This one is Meet Me in Berlin. This is like a, let me see if I can use it here. It's like a, can you see? It's almost like a sheer glowy lip formula and it is fantastic. And this color is perfection and I cannot, doesn't really smell like anything. I cannot recommend this enough. It is beautiful and now I want every color, everything, every color in this sheer, like buildable, glowy, for wonderful absolutely wonderful. This is the thing that I thought had gone missing, but for some reason I hadn't reviewed it and I don't know why. It's a bit of a mistake because I have known for a really long time this is a fantastic formula. This is the Super Shock Bronzer by Colourpop. They released this this year. This is a fantastic formula. I cannot recommend this enough. I don't know if they're selling this in store at Ulta or if you have to order it, but I cannot recommend this cream bronzer enough. If you are looking for a cream bronzer at the drugstore, do not get the e.l.f. one, do not get the NYX one, do not get the Pacifica one. Get either this one or the Makeup Revolution cream bronzer, the one that's also in a not in a stick, but like in a compact like this. Those are two cream bronzers that are affordable that I 100% recommend. This one is in I'll Bet. Beautiful color if you are like medium like me. Absolutely wonderful formula. I'm so happy that Colourpop took the time to reformulate these because they are so good. And at number one, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised, but I love the Scooby-Doo palettes by Glamlight. I love that they made more Tempan palettes. So this is the Creeps and Crawls. It has Shaggy on the front. The packaging is stunning. Everything about this is beautiful. The, mm, the quality of these are beautiful. And I'm kind of excited that this decided to just do a this is a little bit Halloween theme because it is based on not necessarily the whole gang. The theme of this collection is uh, Scooby, Shaggy, and the villains. And you can see a villain up here, like there's little, this little witch here. And I love that they just went with this like dark, murky Halloween theming. It is just so dark and sexy and mysterious. And I love this color scheme. Again, would I wish that there was like a pastel in here? Sure. But this is only a 10 pan. It's not that hard to match it with other things, but the quality, I love this. Love this. I think this is beautiful and I'm so excited to have this to mix and match with other things from Glamlight as well. And then we have the, I don't know how to say this properly. Uh, rah, rah. Am I saying that correctly? I, I don't think I am. But this is the Ra Ra Raggy palette. This has Scooby and Shaggy. And there's another villain on the inside. And this one I think is my favorite because this one has the bright greens, the bright blue, and the really dark ones. And I just think it is a unique color story that is very different from what Glamlight has done before. And I love that they're continuing with the Tempan palettes and I hope we get to see more of that in the future as well because I feel like there's so many things that they could do with that. I'm just really excited about these. I think they did a good job. And these are, I think these are $20 each. So they were also able to keep the collection, the whole Scooby-Doo collection fairly affordable for being an indie brand that is doing a collab with a fairly famous franchise. 
And I just think that they really killed it with these two palettes. I also really like the lip products that was in this collection. I think that those were really pretty as well. Uh, yeah, I just, I really like these. And again, I wanted to mention that Fenty, I don't know what it's called, the blender thing, because I have been using that quite a lot. Actually, let me go get it and just put that in as a bonus because I really like that one as well. Here it is. I, for some reason, I put it back into my collection, even though I haven't reviewed it. This is the Ease Droplet and this is the All Over Glow Enhancer and I have mine in Taffy Topaz, which is number two. And I just really like how this one... You can tell how much I used. Oh my God. Okay, I've used a lot of this. This one, it just has a beautiful sheen, but it doesn't have a base color to it. And I like that this isn't glittery. It just looks dewy. So this one, this one mixed with the eavesdrop just looks like the most incredible foundation ever. And I have really been enjoying mixing this one together with uh, foundations to make them look just a little bit more satin without disrupting the formula. So I really do recommend that one as well. And I will link that one as well down below together with all of these different things. Please let me know if you've tried any spectacular products at the end of the year, or if you've tried any duds that we all need to stay clear of. Just know that the best and worst of 2022 is coming up real fast. And also I am preparing to do a full palette like ranking of all of the palettes that I have tried and reviewed this year from the absolute worst to the absolute best. I hope you're having an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again tomorrow in a new video. Bye!